Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to a makeup haul. Yay! How do we get that background noise? I will work on that, promise. Some of you may have known that I traveled to New York last week and I did attend the makeup show. It's the IMATS in New York City. It was located at Pier 94, which is a really, really big warehouse. Not sure if you guys may have heard or attended or been there for another event, but as I was told, it's a pretty newer venue. However, it was huge. So. I have a lot of footage of that show as well as good eats and everything just exploring the city however just need some time to gather all the information together so i can post it there's a whole bunch of random things so i hope you guys are ready for this get your popcorn ready whatever you want to do and i'm going to show you my haul in no particular order i'm going to show you what i got so Let's just get started with the stuff I got from IMATS because it's a whole bunch of stuff. Some of you guys know that I'm a big fan of Cinema Secrets, especially their brush cleaner. So I had to buy another one. It's kind of difficult to buy large things when you are flying because you do have to check in this large bottle. You have to make sure you close it super tight, double bag it in case from all the shaking and everything that it does accidentally spill slowly and it gets everywhere. That was one thing why I didn't want to purchase a lot of um, big bottles or any types of liquids just because of that reason. Although I am a pro artist, I do get pro discounts at certain brands, I could buy it online, in store, or even at the show. However, a lot of times at the shows, they don't promote special discounts that they would online or in store. So if it's a good opportunity and it's a good price, might as well get it, right? This is what I got. And again, this is my brush cleaner. I do have a few of these palettes that you can actually work off of. This is just a regular palette um, that you can put your foundation, concealers, sometimes you mix foundations together and you can use this so that way you don't have to use your hand. For a makeup artist, you got to make sure you cleanse your hands in front of the client to ensure that you are being sanitary and just working on your hands. A lot of times your hand gets dirty and you touch things, it gets everywhere. A palette is actually a good idea. I have another palette by what brand is that? It actually looks like a painter. It's a painter's palette. It's a little bit rounded and it has a hole for your thumb. I wonder if it's a rounded or a squared one. I forget which one I have. I think it could be the square one. But anyways, it has a little hole here and it comes with a spatula so you can hold it and it just doesn't fall out. But sometimes I just like working like this and just working off of the palette than having it stuck to your thumb. I don't know. I came across this also by Cinema Secrets and I loved it. Z palettes. I bought more Z palettes just because I have a lot of loose shadows, blushes, powders in the pans that I can put in here. So I bought two large ones. This is the regular thin large one. And I bought this one, which is a large dome one. So again, Mac lovers who likes those big shadows or the thicker ones, you can place it in here since it's a little bit taller. Regular eyeshadow pans from most lines at that they carry, you can just use these little thin guys here. What else did I get? Oh, how do I know what this boutique's name was? So I am a complete makeup junkie and it really doesn't matter what brand it is. I mean, a lot of people rave about certain brands that may work for them but doesn't work for you. It doesn't matter, I will try them all. So no name brands is just as good as a name brand. I forget if this was I don't know if it was, I don't think it was Morphe. I wonder if it was like crown brushes or something. I forget what it was, but it's just a little kabuki brush. And I'm not opening this because I'm actually gifting this to someone. And this one here is just a regular kabuki brush. It's super soft, by the way. And it has a little slight angle to it, which I thought it was kind of neat. So people who like to apply powder to set their under eyes, it's a little bit rounded yet flat so it can really just work right under the eye. I don't know, so this is it. Also another name, no name brand, I came across this booth that sells shears, razors, tweezers, you know, grooming kits for your eyebrows and I really like this. This is a chameleon. I guess is what you call it. So it's kind of like a rainbow effect. It is stainless steel, so it won't rust. 
hopefully. I have your business card. I'm going to come after you. A small little scissors. This is actually meant to cut your eyebrows. However, I usually keep scissors in my kits when I'm doing a lash application. Not everyone's eye shape has the same width or length. Therefore, you do need to cut them. So I just need an extra pair of scissors because the pair of scissors that is in my kit right now is currently a scissors that my grandmother had gifted me years ago and it's very sentimental. So if I do lose that I would cry. I wanted to buy a new set since I was at the show. It was two for 25. So I paired it with these tweezers. And this is also, oh, the brand is here. The brand is Beauty, no, Beaut, like Beauty. Ciru, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is the name. And it states stainless steel there. A slant tweezer. It's not too, it's sharp, but sharp enough to really hold the lashes really close to the band. So when you're doing lash application on yourself or on a client, you can really control that lash. So these were it. Two for 25. Speaking of tweezers and lashes, we got lash. Look at that bag. Girls at this booth from Got Lashes was wearing a really cute t-shirt and I asked her if they were selling it and it was only given to the employees that were working at the booth and I was really bummed out about it. It, it was a white t-shirt and it was a simple print that said, All you need is coffee and contour. Of course, some more Demi Wispies, which I am wearing today. However, in addition to the Demi Wispies, I did buy two different ones. So they're also natural as well too, but they're not so thick in between, which are the lashes. These are the 150 ones. These are a little bit softer. They're not as thick. And then I also, I also bought the number 110s which are a little bit in between the natural ones, but they're a little bit thicker in between. I don't know. This is what I wanted. But like I mentioned, the promotion was by seven pairs of lashes. You do get a lash glue. So this is the black adhesive lash glue, which I will put in my kit. The ones in here are, they're all the same. These are the 965s. And these are actually, I bought 50 of these, and these are all for my kits. For those of you who don't know, I am a makeup artist and I specialize in weddings. So every makeup application, I do provide lashes which are optional. So I do need to have a good stock of them. Well, I did come across a new booth that I've never seen online. I just heard of them. I've never had a chance to touch them or play around with these tools, but they are the Smith brushes. I didn't buy a whole collection as I do have a whole collection of a lot of brushes, but I did come across two brushes that I thought were really unique and something that I don't have. These two brushes, these are by the Smiths, Smith, Smith brushes, and they are from Canada. So kind of cool. The lady approached me. I told her that I've never had a chance to touch them and just see how the quality of them. So she's like, oh, here, touch them all. And she's just like, give them all to me. Here is a Smith 112. The wooden handle. This right here is nice and gold. And this is a really small tapered brush. This tapered brush, it's so small and thin. So a lot of people would want to use this for contouring and getting into that cheekbones. But when I looked at this, I really want to use this for highlighting or under the eyes so I can really set my powder right under my eyes if I'm doing highlight here, down the bridge of my nose. I don't know, I found this brush really handy to do that so I can't wait to try this. I gotta take it out of its wrapper. The second brush here is the Smith 302. And this one here is actually a lip brush. But when I saw this brush, I did not want to use it for my lips. You see how it's nice and thin and it has a nice angle to it? I thought of doing this to carve out my brows. So when that lady said, these are for your lips, she's like, oh, you could use this for your brows. Well, duh. 
It's a multi-use product, so I'm not using this for my lips because I not, hardly use a brush for my lips. So this is going to be a something to carve out my brows with. What else did I get? Ooh, I remember what I got and I looked over there. I'm a traveling makeup artist and I've had so many makeup cases, train cases throughout the year, small to big, you know, and I'm really happy with my current bag at the moment that I have. It's really nice. It's large. It has four plastic, or sorry, eight plastic drawers and it could just fit a ton of makeup and with my airbrush gun. However, it does get a little bit heavy. Sometimes I have to just bring that those four color foundations, those four colored concealers and just really mix them just because it's really heavy to carry and just to lug around. So again, having a pro artist, which is really helpful and appreciated, I could get a discount with this brand, which is Zuka. So Zuka is a makeup case for flyers, travelers, on the go, you name it. They have a whole bunch from little kid backpacks to adults. So it, they have a, a large range of selection. So I've been eyeing this for a long time, which is called the traveler's case. One, it's light. Two, you can sit on it. Three, it's um, carry-on size. So when you're on the airplane, you could put it on the overhead compartment because who likes checking in their makeup? Having an airbrush gun, that's something you do have to check in because they do consider it as like a compressor, which is like a dangerous good kind of thing. So anyways, it's a whole nother can of worms right there. But I did come across this and it was a better discount than if I were to buy it myself online. And not just having a better discount, it does come with the seat cushion. The Zuka case right here. So this one here is the... Uh, it's, it's empty, but it's still heavy. <laughs> this one here is the traveler's case. So like I mentioned, you can sit on this guy. Who wants to sit on that hard metal? So this is the cushion. So it's a quilted little cushion. It's very thin. It's not something thick, but it would be a little bit more comfortable than sitting on this actual guy here. So this case is very sturdy. It has lots of pockets. As you see, you can put something flat here. Open, the, oops. open up this guy here and it goes whoa so this here you can my dog's scared this here you can apply things and this is a pretty thick padding here so nothing will crush this is the actual cover for this box so it doesn't get dirty which I don't need at the moment come with five compartment baggies. So the difference, and you can actually label it. So the difference of this in my current case is that mine are a hard case, which are drawers, but sometimes it is a little bit handy to have these bags here to use. And it does come with five. So it does feel and look like a carry-on case. You can, bleh, I'm sorry, you can just put everything right in here. What I do like about this case is that it has these rollerblade wheels. The current bag that I have have these plastic wheels which got really loud in, in time by using it and rolling in the streets. It's just super loud. Okay, so last but not least, what I have purchased was a makeup line that I've never tried. and. I've seen it, um, it just doesn't sell in stores, so it's a little bit inconvenient. However, I learned that they do sell it at Urban Outfitters. I was at the Urban Outfitters in New York in Herald Square and they have a pretty good selection. They even, uh, even sell Stila there, which Sephora doesn't anymore, only Ulta's. Um, what other brands do they have there? They had a few, I believe, was it Bobbi Brown? I forgot, but it's just like really unique brands. You're like, oh my God, like whatever happened to them? Lime Crime, oh my gosh. I've been really into matte lipsticks, lip stains. However, it just doesn't really work well with me because my lips are always dry, so I have to reapply or just make sure I exfoliate it ahead of time. Um, but the reason why I bought so many is because it did come with the gift of purchase. Um, Not sure what I, it smells like, but this is the color here. Oh, I can't wait to try this on. 
This one here is a true love set. It's a color called Saint. Not sure how I feel about this, but it's a nice brown color. Brown, brown reddish color. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. This color here is Cupid. Wow, that's a really pretty color. And the last color here I have is True Love. Oh, they're so pigmented. That's a really bright color. What it did come with is called the Lime Crime 6th Anniversary. This is the gift with purchase. This one here is Croquette. Croquette? Croquette. Croque. These are the packages of their lipsticks. Very cute. And they have a little unicorn on there. Look at that. So cute. So this is the lipstick color. Again, it's Croquette. And here is the color. This is a beautiful nudie pink color. Very pretty. So that was my iMats haul. So let's move on to Sephora VIB. I went and shopped at Sephora VIB before the show because the show was on Saturday. So I took advantage of that 15% off um, bomb because in New York it was really cold. It was really windy. So I've heard a lot of good things about this Smith's Rosebud lip balm. I decided to get this. It was a squeezy tube applicator. It was easy to apply and it saved my life the whole week there. I did come across two foundations. I bought this Born This Way and I also bought the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation and both of them were just completely different colors. So I went back to another Sephora and I rematched myself and Warm Beige was the color which I am wearing today and it works and it it suits my complexion, but I'm sure that foundation is really good. It just didn't work for me and the shades did not work for me either. So <sighs> moving on. So the Marc Jacobs one, I tried, I don't know how for some reason it got 26 and it made my face super white. Um, maybe I meant to grab another color. It was dark in there. I don't know, but the second color I got was like 34 and it still wasn't working out. So I just gave it a third try and tried to find another color and they just didn't have in stock. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to leave empty handed. I do have this foundation, which I actually like a lot better. It gave a lot of coverage and it just suited my complexion a little bit more. The Remarkable, um, it's nice. It's a nice foundation. It was just very heavy and I just like the applicator where it came in a little drop. I like things are squeezy tubes or pumps. It's just easy to work with and sanitary. I'm not a really big fan of translucent powders. I did use it in the past many, many times. I've tried MAC, Makeup Forever, um, Krylon. I mean, there's like so many that I've tried in the past, even Bare Minerals. I just didn't like it. Um, so I've been using pressed powders a lot as my finishing powders or to set things. So since it was VIB 50% off, I said, hey, why not? Let's just give this a try. So I jumped on the bandwagon for the Laura Mercier translucent powder. This guy right here, and I tried it. I did not use it today. I used it once or twice on my trip. Um, I just didn't have my beauty blender with me, which I do like to use loose powders with beauty blenders, regular colored powders for the rest of the face where I'm just really setting that certain area with this with only a beauty blender. But I'm gonna give this a try one more time and see how that works. Tote bag. This is a tote bag that came with the purchase for VIBs and it says there's still some space left on my vanity. I don't know, do you? Because I sure don't. So that completes my Sephora haul. What else do I have? Ooh. My favorite eyebrow pencil that I usually buy at the face shop, which never has anything in stock, so I always have to call different face shops 
in California and just order and send it to me. And this time I was in New York and I did come across a face shop. So I just literally just bought the whole stock. These, these guys here are the refill fill. These guys here are the refill pencil. Refill for these guys here are the refill for my pencils. So that's why it's just a small box. So they actually recreated their pencil design where you can just pull out the tab and insert the new refill in there, which is nice because these are $3 and the pencil are six. Well, since I was there, I bought the whole stock. There is about, I don't know, a good amount. I think I'm set. So there's this place called the Chelsea Market, which is a very popular place for people to eat and shop. If you've been to the San Francisco Ferry Building, it's really similar to the Chelsea Market. However, it is like 10 times better. They don't have a farmer's market outside. It's just a little walkway from point A to point B. It's not too long, not too short, but uh, basically it just has all these shops. Um, there's pop-up shops for clothing, for kitchenware there's just a whole bunch of stuff there's sweets there's sour there's it's a whole seafood heaven there they have this whole fish market it's just so disgusting because i don't eat seafood sorry i'm not a seafood lover but on some of my footage i will show you that um they did have a pop-up shop which i bought a t-shirt for my brother and it's just the map of new york it's weird because it kind of looks like a deer but basically the creators just wanted to outline the public transit, which is the bus, the subways, and I guess the train. It's a very large city. Not too many people are aware, but New York is very big. And on the back, it does say New York City, and this is made by American Apparel. What else did we get? Ooh, this is nothing interesting, but it was interesting to me. I went to the CVS there and I bought a packet of paper i bought a packet of tissue because my allergies were just insane there it was just going crazy but i like the package because it does have the different cities in there so i kept one that says new york so last but not least got a whole bunch of bagels that we bought you see how huge these bagels are they're freaking big look how thick they are they're like the biggest of my face we bought a whole bunch of bagels just to give out to the family and some friends. And what's really unique about the bagels made in New York, it's the water. So the water that they use to make this makes it really unique and very tasteful. And I do, I normally like to go to Noah's Bagels and my favorite thing is to get the blueberry toasted bagel with the strawberry cream cheese. The morning that we left, I did try one of these cinnamon ra raisin bagels, which is so, so good. And mind you, this was 6.30 in the morning with the strawberry cream cheese. And you can just tell that the cream cheese was like super whipped. So it's really airy. It was really nice. It wasn't heavy. Um, it was really, really good. So our flight was 10.30 and we arrived at the gate by 9.30. Just sitting there, 9, 9.30. And I ate my bagel. It wasn't soggy. It was still toasted, cool, warm, but it was so good. Oh. I want a bagel now. Last thing I purchased was these sunglasses. I know these are so weird. I love them though. Look at them. They're so crazy looking, huh? These were purchased at Urban Outfitters and they were only $18. Super lightweight, they're frameless on, actually they're frameless everywhere except for just the, I guess the bracket where you hold the glasses, but I love it. It's a little bit scratched up. They were all scratched up. You wouldn't believe how annoying I was. I was like, do you have another pair? Um, just because these four out here were scratched. So I made her take them all out and she laid them all out and I'm looking at them all like this. Like I can see it from an angle. They're still scratched up. Least had the least amount of scratches, but you can see they're... I love these. I was getting looks down the street like 
my brother was like, oh, you look so hip. And I was like, good. Do I look like a New Yorker now? That's it for my New York haul. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully I can get the footage up shortly so you guys can view and see what I did. Thanks again for stopping by my channel. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye!